Oh, we love you so much. We're so glad you're here. We praise his holy name today. So if you're sitting at home and you're on your sofa or in your easy chair, ooh, stand up in your robe and your slippers with your cup of coffee <laughs> or your running pants, <laughs> your turkey pants. <laughs> And praise, God with, <laughs> and praise God with us. Yes? Amen. Let's praise Amen. God. Mm, we're going to war this morning. Amen. This is how we fight. That's right. This means war. This means war. This means war. This means war. I got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail. But I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day. But I'm watching while I pray.
Christian Yarn.
as I see. Yes, yes, yes. Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Yes, Lord Jesus. This will be my passion, laying at your feet. Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Dear Miss Father, close his friend.
miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker. Sing that again. Way maker, miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker, way maker, miracle worker. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. church come on church let's praise him let's worship him come on let's magnify his name yeah Baba Sundo we thank you Jesus we thank you Jesus we thank you Jesus come on come on come on come on praise him We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on. Come on. You know God's done so much for you. Even though you're not worthy. He still loves us. Even though we don't deserve it, He still loves us. Come on, come on, worship Him, worship Him. Come on, just lift your hands up. 
Just begin to worship him. Don't worry about nobody else. Just begin to worship him. Come on, this is just between you and the Lord. He wants to get intimate with you. Come on. Make it personal. Yeah, Baba Basha told you. This is about you and Jesus. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify your name, Jesus. That's all, Baba Bakoso.
glory to your name, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We glorify your name, Lord. Father, right now in your name, Jesus, Lord. Lord, we surrender ourselves to you right now, Lord. Lord, we ask you to purify our hearts and our minds, oh God. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. Lord, right now in your name, Jesus, Lord, touch all those right now, Lord, that are backslidden and lost, Lord. All those right now, Lord, Jesus, Lord, that are hurting, Lord. All those right now, Lord, that need your healing, Lord. All those right now, Lord, Jesus, Lord, that are, are, are prideful, Lord. Right now, whatever it may be, God, touch their hearts and their minds, Lord. Let them submit themselves unto you, Lord. Lord, right now, God, we ask that we leave here, Lord, today ever changed, God. Lord, strengthened and encouraged, Lord. Lord, whatever it may need, Lord, that for, for us to gain heaven, Lord, we just want to walk willfully before you, Jesus. Lord, if that's correction, Lord, we receive it, Lord. Lord, if we need humility, Lord, we receive it, Lord. Lord, if we need love, Lord, we receive it, Lord. We just want to be more like you, Jesus. Lord, in everything that we do, Father, in every way that we live, Lord, we want people to see your light shining within us, God. Lord, whenever there's an opportunity, Lord, we just want to witness your way, God. We just want to be the witness that you've called us to be, God. No longer, Lord, will we hide, Lord. No longer, Lord, will we, we depress, Lord, the things that you've called us to be, Lord. Lord, right now, in your name, Jesus, Lord, we just uplift you, Lord, right now, Lord. Lord, when we leave here, Lord, we want to uplift you, Lord. Lord, we want to be forever changed, God. Lord, everything that we do, God, we want people to always, Lord, recognize that it's all about you, Jesus, Lord. We want them to see, Lord, the filthy rags that you've changed, Lord. We want them to see, God, the life that we used to be, Lord and how glorious it is to be inside of you, God. Lord, we glorify you. We lift your name on high, Lord. Lord, right now, Lord, we ask that you just touch the backsliders, Lord. Lord, right now, whatever it may be, Lord, in their heart, in their mind, Lord, that's holding them back, Lord, from giving over everything to you, Lord. Lord, right now, Jesus, Lord, we speak to that, Lord. We're standing in the gap for them, Lord. Lord, we thank you right now, Jesus, Lord. Lord, we give you all glory, Lord. Lord, we know, Lord, that all of our prayers are answered according to your will, Lord. And upon our faith, Lord, we trust and we only believe in you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we pray. We say amen. Hallelujah. I'm doing my best. Oh, now we, here we go. Now we got juice. All right. <laughs> so before we, we do that, I am reminded <clears throat> um, the occasion when I had the opportunity to go to Israel. And I saw the area. I was there at the place that, that was called Calvary. And... I was there visibly where you could see the place of the skull called Golgotha. When I took a picture of it, you could see the skull that was formed in this kind of a um, cliffside that looked over the area where they say that Christ was crucified. But here's, here's the amazing part, that the enemy took that area and they paved it over with a parking lot and now buses parked there because they're trying to erase the memory that that Christ had even been crucified there which led me to believe <clears throat> that our God is bigger than that you may be able to pave over a, a, a spot so it can't be a tourist attraction but it, it doesn't matter because as I read in Ephesians chapter 4 
And I read this, man, so many times in my life. Even though I read it, I finally saw it today. Ephesians 4 and 8, where it says, Wherefore, he saith, he ascended up on high, and he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. So hold on to that. He gave gifts unto men. Now <clears throat> that he ascended, but what is it that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? So in other words, Christ himself, himself stepped down from the heavenlies, and he descended to be amongst us. And then he ascended, but here's the part again. Uh, he that descended is also the same that ascended, check this out, far above all heavens. Some will say there's three heavens. Some will say there's seven. It doesn't matter because he ascended even far above that. That's the, out of all the years I've seen that, I finally see it. Why? Because remember the gifts? And he, that he might fill all things. No matter where you go, he's already filled it. Even if you go in the lowest parts of hell, to Taros, he was, he's, he's there. He's there. Why? And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teacher, teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of you and me, the body of Christ. So no matter where you go, ladies and gentlemen, saints of God, he's already there. He's filled all things, even above the heavens. United Airlines can't touch this. A submarine can't go deep enough. Not at all. He's already there. So I want you to be encouraged, saints, because even though Satan is trying to snuff out our voices, even though he's trying to pave down and trying to get you to shut up and not speak about righteousness, although they're trying to actively shut churches down, our voices, the Holy Spirit will not be silenced. Amen. He gave us the Holy Ghost for a reason. Amen. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. Oh, now I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. Oh, now I'm going to pray so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to pray so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. Oh, now I'm going to talk so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to talk so God can use me Oh, now I'm going to love so God can use me anyway, Lord, anytime. I'm going to love so God can use me anyway, Lord, anytime. Oh, now I'm going to live so God can use me anyway, Lord, Anytime I'm gonna live so God can use me anyway, Lord. Anytime. came from the bathroom 
I don't have toilet paper or anything from my foot, do I? <laughs> don't turn around. <laughs> Well, you know, last week I sang that song, uh, I Miss My Time With You. And um, that's, Bishop paid me for that song. <laughs> this week we're going to do an, uh, an, one that um, kind of also talks about uh, spending time with God. Spending time with God. You know, if we, <clears throat> if you ever have backslidden, hello, I have. Um, it's always because I have not spent enough time with God. Always. So he's always there. He always loves us. He always lets us start over. But he's going to wait. We have to go to him. And that's what this song's about.
Praise the Lord. Oh, no screeching. <laughs> Glory to God. Mm -hmm. I'm finally accepted. Praise the Lord. God is good. Good to see everybody out today. We're asking God to continue to bless and lift people up and while we know it's a blessing for them to see it on uh, YouTube and Facebook the messages we pray that they can get back to having fellowship face to face whatever your comfort level is we'll go with that praise the Lord uh, this morning I want to talk about something that I call same mind as Christ. Same mind as Christ. Praise the Lord. We said uh, beginning in December we're going to do the children's church again, right? Correct. Correct. December, okay. Yes. All right. Praise the Lord. I don't want to leave the little people out. Um, uh, same mind as Christ. Basically, it's asking what's, what's your mind on? What's your mind on? I if you will... Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, if we start there, we have an admonition or a command of God. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, it's interesting to me, uh, uh, and this happened years and years ago in my Christian life, when I would run across things like this in the Bible, and, and, and I thought, wow, it doesn't say there's no if in it. It's not like if you feel good, if everything is going okay. <laughs> you know, it, if my wife cooked last night, glad it's not that, because I'd still be waiting to get my mind. <laughs> But there's no if in it, no condition. He says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And I want to tell you what this word mind means so that you understand. It means to exercise the mind, entertain, or have a sentiment or an opinion. It implies to be mentally disposed more or less earnestly in a certain direction. It means to uh, interest oneself in with concern or obedience, to set affection on, set the affection on, to be careful, to, to, to like, be of one, be of the same mind, uh, uh, to regard, to savor or to think. So it's like what your mind is on. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This is what I call a New Testament commandment. No if, ands, or buts about it. This is what you need to do. You're saying you want to be born again, you want to be saved, you want to live the Christ life, then you need to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Start there. This is basically describing uh, 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 what you're thinking about. What's on your mind. Uh, what you're predisposed to do. What you're most fond of. What you're about. 
What's your mind on? What's your mind on? Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, Romans 8, uh, 3 through 6 kind of describes it even uh, more vividly in the scripture. It says, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Uh, for what, uh, uh, for, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So the Bible says this, that the law, God gave a law, and the law was perfect. It was righteous. The law had righteousness in it. It was what you could, if you could live the law, you would be righteous. But it said the law could not do that. What the law could not do, it was weak through the flesh. It, it wasn't that the law, the flesh was weak. Flesh couldn't keep it. So that weakened the law. The law had no ability to do what, what it was, the righteousness that it was made to do because it was weak through the flesh. The flesh couldn't keep it. So God did this. I'm going to come into the world and, and, and in the likeness of flesh, and I'm going to condemn sin in the flesh so that the righteousness that was in the law could be fulfilled in us now who are born again. Now the righteousness of the law could be fulfilled. Uh, uh, but it can only be fulfilled in them who walk not after the flesh, but in the spirit. Yes. Yes. If you walk in the flesh, you cannot fulfill the righteousness of the law. That's right. See, you have to be walking in the spirit. And then he goes on to say, uh, 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 just so you understand, this is for clarification. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, they mind the things of the spirit. <laughs> and by the way, the word mind here, if you're minding the things of the flesh, then you are the same definition we had before. You are exercising your mind on the things of the flesh. You are entertaining or having a sentiment or an opinion uh, uh, you're mentally disposed to, uh, more or less certainly about some things in the flesh. Certain, uh, 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 your, your interest, your concern, your obedience is to the flesh. You've set your affection on the flesh. See, Paul teaching now. He's teaching. He said, he, say, he, he wants to know like this. You could ask yourself, this, this is a conversation you can have with yourself. You know, is, is, is your mind on the flesh, yourself, or spirit, Jesus? See, people get in trouble with this one. They have long time conflict and animosity with relatives, with uh, 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 parents, other saints. Because they were self-focused instead of Christ-focused. You was thinking about you. You was thinking about you. Think about the last argument you had with somebody. You were thinking about you. You didn't think about Christ. You think about Christ, you just try to find out what's wrong with them. Lord, what happened? You know, some of us don't get that smart until after the argument. Some of us don't get that smart ever. That's, that's the ones I'm worried about. Praise the Lord. See, 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 so, so, so basically, you are minding the flesh and not the spirit. So you think about that. That's what, that's what God's trying to get you to see. You, you know, if you're minding the flesh, then that's, that's terrible. See, if you're carnally minded, that's death. That's going to lead to death. Spiritually minded is life and peace. Praise the Lord. Praise God. See, this is about whether you are spiritual or, or, or carnal in character. That, that's what this is. If your character, your character, you know, character, we talked about this several times before. You know, you have a certain character. Everybody has a certain character. In fact, if somebody hangs around you long enough, they know you, uh, they could determine or guess what you're going to say, how you're going to respond to things because they know your character. See, so, so, so what God is asking us, and, and like I've said many times before, God gave me this revelation, I figured this out, what happens to us when we become born again, what God is doing is he's changing your character 
from what it, you are to the character of Christ. That's, that's, that's it. So that if a person thinks about you and your character, at some point in your Christian walk, when these people start thinking about you and your character, they'll be thinking about, wow, that's like Christ. She's, she, she's Christ-like. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, so, so but, but, but uh, uh, here's how it takes you. Here's how you get caught. Here's, here's how you get taken. If a person, uh, 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 if you're a person who wants to relate to the world, in other words, in what you, what you say, what you wear, what you do, you want to relate to the world, then, then you've got to run with the world, worldly places and worldly friends, to be appreciated. You understand? For instance, if, uh, you know, if I decide I- I'm going to wear a certain kind of clothes, well, I got to hang with those people that wear those kind of clothes or it's a waste. I'm wasting my time. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> if you decide you're going to dress all in black all the time, then you got to hang with a crowd of people that wear black all the time. Or you, you won't be appreciated. Nobody knows what you're doing. You know, they don't know what you're doing. See, I, I asked Mike there. Where Mike? My son Mike. He back there? Anyway, uh, when he was when he was in when he was in high school, when he was in high school, uh, and just so you know, this could happen to Christians too, because he was born again. Uh, uh, he, he was in high school, and and he decided that he wanted to dress like a certain way that he had seen some of the rappers and and whatever, I guess. But he wanted all khakis. And I could tell him, yeah, we were, man, when we were coming up, Jack, when I was coming up, man, we used to have khakis, man. We'd send them to the cleaners, man. They had that sharp crease in them, you know. But we couldn't find any like that. All we could find was wash and wear. It's current days now, not them straight cotton khakis. And uh, so I knew he wasn't going to wear that outfit but one time because you got to iron it, you know, <laughs> when it's new. But the thing about it is he was going to a school that, he, he couldn't relate to them because he wore his whole khaki outfit to school one day and he was sitting down chilling, you know, being Mr. Mike, all cool and everything in his khakis. And one of his friends asked him over at Miller North, hey, Mike, how come you dress like a janitor? <laughs> no, that really happened. He didn't know that that was supposed to be cool. See, if I'm going to dress like the world, then I got to go run with the world so, they can, so I can relate to them, so they can say, hey, man, you look cool. Yeah, right. See, you get caught like that. And now you start running with the world, and you're part of it. You know what happened? You, your mind, you were exercising your mind on carnality. You, 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 you were predisposed to, to carnal stuff, and you got caught. In other words, we need to exercise our mind on things above, spiritual, not on things of the earth, carnal. Praise the Lord. There, there's a passage of scripture that tells you that. Colossians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3 says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ and God. You know what affection means? You know what affection means? Affection means this, to exercise the mind, entertain or have a sentiment or opinion, the same thing as mind means in those other passages that we just read. Set your affection. That's what a sentiment means. A sentiment uh, uh, is a mental feeling, a general feeling, underlying feeling, a deep feeling, appealing to something that you feel. So it's telling you that to set your affection, uh, 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 that I need you to exercise your mind. I need you to entertain or have a sentiment or feelings or opinion uh, about Christ or things above. Not on things of the earth. I need you to, I need you to, to interest yourself in with, 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 with obedience and concern about things above, not on things of the earth. See, uh, 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 so you want to be going with the spiritual and not the carnal. Why? Because the first thing we read was a commandment that we had a New Testament. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. 
Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You know, what's your mind on? What's your mind? That makes a difference. Praise the Lord. Uh, look at uh, Matthew chapter 16. Begin in verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things of God, but those things that be of men. Uh, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Okay. Now, Peter was always getting in trouble, trying to check Jesus. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he always getting in trouble. So he, you missed the part where he said, I'm going to rise again, I guess, and be raised on the third day because you went off. No, that ain't going to happen to you. You know, he got real religious. We're going to save you, Lord. You understand? But Jesus said this, no, you're an offense to me, for thou, here's the problem that you're having, Peter. You save us the things not of God, but those that be of men. You're not spiritual. You're carnal. Here, just so you get it, here's what savor us mean. When he said, thou savor us not the thing of God, but the thing of men. Savor us means to exercise the mind, to entertain or have a sentiment or opinion, to be mentally disposed more or less earnestly in a certain direction. To interest oneself in with concern and obedience. To set the affection on. You're still minding the things of the flesh. That's my only issue with you, Peter. You're minding the things of the flesh, not the things of the spirit. I'm going to have Paul write about that to the Roman church later on. But I'm telling you now. See, Peter, you are an offense to me because you're not exercising your mind on the things of God, but the things that be of men. So you're an offense to me. You're an offense to God, just so you understand that. What Jesus is saying is, if you're exercising your mind on the things that be of men, other than the things that be of God, if you're minding the flesh and not the spirit, if you're savoring the things of men, if your affection is on the things of men, you're an offense to God. He said, you are an offense to me. You're not doing it right. You're entertaining or having feelings and views about men, the flesh. You're disposed mentally in the direction of man instead of God. Your interest and concern is with men. Your affection is set on men and not God. So... That's why I said, <laughs> that's, that's why I said that to you. See, 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 uh, 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 and I like, you know, I, I said this, that you are an offense to me. So what, what that means is you are, uh, uh, that, that word comes from the Greek word scandalon, uh, or our word scandal. You're a trap stick, like a bent sapling, a snare, which is a, tri a, a, a trap. You're a cause of displeasure or sin. You're an occasion to fall, of stumbling, an offense, a thing that offends, a stumbling block. Hey, if you're not going to get your mind in the place where Christ was, if you're not going to have your mind, that mind being you that was in Christ Jesus, and, and, and you're going to be going around, I, I'm, I'm dealing with the flesh now. My mind on the flesh. I, I can remember years and years and years ago when, 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 when God first gave me a revelation, reading this past description and everything, I was all excited. Wow, that's deep. You understand, like that. And God started teaching me what that really means, and he started showing me my own life. See, you, 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 your mind on flesh. You, you ain't, that ain't spiritual. You're minding the things of the flesh. You're carnal. 
right now. No, you you gonna you you know when they call you when they say brother Moten, will you teach this thing? You gonna get all spiritual. <laughs> you gonna start searching the scriptures and being that and sweating and holla ba 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 shata while you studying. But right now, what you just did, because, you know why, Mike? Because it's not your character. It's an off and on thing. It's a I do it now, then I don't do it. I do it now, I don't do it. No, no, I need to be your character. That's why I said let this mind be in you. Let the mind of Christ be in you. Because that way, it's part of your character. It's what you exercise your mind on. It's what you're predisposed to. It's what you've set your affection on. That's just who you are now. Yeah, yeah, Peter, you, you're an offense to me. See, see, I don't want to be an offense to God. I don't want to be an offense to God. Glory to God. I don't want to be a scandal or scandalous. <laughs> Look at this. First Samuel 13. First Samuel chapter 13, beginning the seventh verse. And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. They're in a battle now. They're in a war. And Saul is the uh, uh, king. And Saul is out to battle with them. And it looks like they're in trouble. And uh, uh, the people start getting scared. Some of them left. Some of them went uh, uh, over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and his people followed him trembling. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering, and it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, uh, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmash, therefore, said I, the Philistines will come down uh, now upon me to Gilgal. And I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered the burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly, that thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord had commanded him uh, to be a captain over his people, because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Now, here was the issue that Saul had. Saul, you are not a priest. You are the king. You don't do burnt offerings. You command the army. You collect all the stuff that you want the people to do and make their children work for you and do all the stuff that kings do. You don't do burnt offerings. You, you've done foolishly. You've broken the commandment of God. So what was Saul thinking? What was he predisposed to do? What was he most fond of or his affection was set on? Uh, uh, what did he care about? What was on his mind? Well, uh, uh, Saul said, because I saw the people uh, uh, were scattered from me. Uh, the Philistines will come down now upon me. He was thinking about me. He was thinking of himself. He was predisposed to do for me. He was most fond of me. He cared about me. His mind was on me, on himself. So I forced myself to disobey the commandment of God. I didn't want to do it, Lord, but I had to force myself. That means he knew he was doing something wrong. Right. Right. <laughs> That's what he's telling you. He didn't know he was spilling the beans, you know what I mean, but he, <laughs> he, he, he knew. I know I'm doing wrong because I forced myself uh, 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 to do this, uh, uh, to disobey the commandment of God. Which commandment? 
For the church, it is, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. As a commandment. Are you forcing yourself to disobey it? Uh, 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 here's another one. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Are you just insisting on being carnally minded? Are you just going to continue to be what you are and not be concerned about what God said? See, see, Saul was in a situation where here's your test. And we know it was a test because you're waiting on Samuel to come and Samuel was going to do that. But the Bible said he didn't come in the appointed days that he was supposed to come. What God did was waited to see what you would do. And you did exactly what was, you're not supposed to do. And the Bible says, as soon as you finish, here comes Samuel. <laughs> what? What you doing? Same way Samuel had to ask you, if you killed all the uh, uh, Amalekites, if you did what I told you, uh, what's that bleeding I hear? How is it I hear sheep? Because you're thinking about you. Your mind is on men. You're savoring the thing of man, not of God. You are not exercising your mind on spiritual things, but on carnal things. That's what your mind is on. That's what you're doing. Your mind is not. You do not. You have not let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Your character is not the one of Christ. You walking in you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, you know, like if you if you if you if you did something, if somebody said to you, you know, you, you wanted to, you were trying to fix something, and they said, "Why don't you use this?" He said, "I already tried that. That's not going to work. You're not going to do the same thing." Well, you already tried you. You weren't working. You couldn't get yourself out of anything. You couldn't fix anything. You couldn't save anything. In all the things that you tried to get peace, you know that that's what everybody's doing. You, everybody in the life is trying to, this is part of your nature uh, 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 as a human, you're trying to accomplish or provide for yourself the things that God promised that he's going to give you. The sad part about it is this, is that when we get in church, after a little while, the same thing starts to happen to people in church. You start trying to do for yourself the things that God promised to do for you. And then you get mad if God don't let it happen. I prayed. Ah, la, 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 la. You know, okay, you pray all you want. God said, I'm going to give you this. I, you running out there trying to do it for yourself like, well, you don't need me? Right. I, I, I can make it happen. No, 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 you can't. And you tried already and you haven't. That's why you're still trying. Look at 1 Peter 4 and 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Telling you again, you need Christ's mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Now, now, now here's, here's what you want to see here. This word mind means thoughtfulness or moral understanding, intent, mind. So, so here's what you should be. He says this, for as much as Christ is suffering in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. You should arm yourself with the same thoughtfulness, the same moral understanding as Christ had. That's what they're telling you. The same intent, same mind. That, that's what should happen. Here's another command for you. As Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. He's telling you. See, the scripture is telling us that we should take on the same moral understanding as Christ. I want the same moral understanding, the same intent, same thoughtfulness as Christ. Wow. Moral understanding as Christ. 
So in every situation, you would have to think, you would have to pray, you would have to interlock with God. And, you know, and some of you know this already, but, but uh, you know, if you've ever taught anybody, you've been witnessing to somebody, God can have a half hour conversation with you between words. Well, that's what you're after. When you have to make a decision, okay, God, I need to know quickly. I, I need moral understanding. I need your moral understanding. I need to be able to know what to do in this situation so that I'm doing it right. I need the mind of Christ. You didn't make any mistakes, Lord. You didn't sin. And you were completely submitted. You were humble. You were all that. I need that kind of moral understanding. I need that kind of thoughtfulness. I need that intent. I need that mind. See, the... the, the, the problem uh, 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 um, is this. We find it in Philippians 3, uh, 18 through 19. It says, uh, uh, Paul writes to the church at Philippi. He says, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Now, of course, the world is doing that. But Paul is talking about and to Christians or people in the church. He's talking about Christians. He, he's telling them, you know, if you read the, the beginning of the chapter, you talk, he's talking about how who to follow. You know, you need to follow us because we're doing the thing right and everything. So he's he's talking to people in the church. And he's talking about people of church. And we'd say this, well, yeah, we know the world is, you know, their God is their belly. We know that they're the enemies of the cross of Christ. But God, you're talking to the saints now. Right. You understand? Uh, uh, we're talking to people in church. You're talking to some people who have not been born again yet. Uh, who are living and indulging in known sin. <laughs> you know, that, that, that used to scare me. You know, because David wrote about acknowledging his sin. If I acknowledge, you know, if I'm, I'm living in sin and know about it, that's trouble. But you have people in church, he's, it's, Paul is saying, we're talking about people who, who are living. This is the realm or the, the realm of people that he's describing because we're talking about the enemy of the cross of Christ. And you're talking about folks that are, are living in or indulging in known sin. They manifest nothing in their lives that indicates that they love the Lord. In other words, I, I can't see anything about you. If I watch you for a few days, there's nothing in your behavior, what you do, that would make me say, oh, boy, he must love the Lord. <laughs> you know, no decision you made, no, no anything that happened. You know, somebody, somebody, somebody you driving down the street, somebody cut you off, they're completely wrong, and then they stick their hand out the window to give you the happy wave. And then you, I'm going to catch up with them. I got to catch them. <laughs> wait, you son, wait a minute. You know, you cut and running red lights and stuff, trying to catch up with them and stuff like that. Well, that's not going to make me think, wow, they must love Jesus. See, see, yeah, folks in church like this, what Paul is addressing. He's addressing a thing where, where the people, you manifest nothing in your life to indicate that you love the Lord. Who, you have a deeper interest in worldly affairs than in the cause of Christ. You spent more money, more time, and more effort getting to the basketball, the football game, or the something that you're in love with uh, uh, more than you do witnessing. I was going to go over and talk to him about the Lord, but it started raining. <laughs> it started raining. <laughs> you got an umbrella? Were you walking? <laughs> or was you going to use the same mode of transportation that you were going to get to the liquor store? Did I say that out loud? Uh oh. <laughs> you won't give up your worldly concerns. You won't give up their worldly concerns. You're opposed to all the many teachings of Christianity, or many of them. 
You know, the Bible says certain things about a Christian or, 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 or teaches certain things about living righteously and holy before the Lord, but you're opposed to that. I don't see why that make a difference because I can do this and something, 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 you know. Uh, some who are opposed to all the duties of ministry or you neglect them. No witnessing in word or behavior. You know, I've been on secular jobs where they said, we go and do this. Mm, okay, see ya. Come on, Mike, you don't want to go? Mm, no. I don't do that. Oh, we're going to have fun. Have a good time. See, see, here, here's something. Uh, 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 um, see if you can pull this one up, Eli. Can you pull up things that are not already there? Okay. Well, get uh, 2 Timothy 4 and 10. Paul wrote this to Timothy. There you go. Boy, he did it quick, too. For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, uh, uh, Titus to Dalmatia. In other words, Demas' affections was set on this world. Carnal, not spiritual. He was in the church. He was hanging with Paul. He was part of Paul's entourage. But Paul said, no, he forsook me. You know why? Because he's so hung up on the things in this world that he ain't want to run with me no more. You got caught up into what? Oh, I need some new tires for my car. Oh, man, I want some rims like this or this or whatever you caught up into. I, I, I need to do this. I, I got to be like this. I got to go this place. I got to do this. Oh, man, I wanted to come. But, you know, I, every Tuesday I have lunch with this one, this one, this one. What y'all do? No, we just chilling. Okay, he, 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 notice now, he didn't say Demas is not chasing chicks. Right. He's not selling drugs. He's not, you just caught up into the world. You're just worldly. You, you set your affection on things on the earth and not on things above. You're exercising your mind. You're predisposed. You have a sentiment or opinion about worldly things. Your feelings are in that. that, that that's an issue for you. Well, no big deal. I ain't doing nothing. I, that's the problem. You ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Glory to God. Look at, uh, look at um, Isaiah 26 and 3. Thou would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. See, you, you, you want to be in perfect peace? That word peace, really, that's shalom. It's from a word that means safe. Uh, well, happy, friendly. Welfare. Health, prosperity, peace. In other words, that's the thing that everybody's chasing for. I want to be, if you listen to or if you ever got a job as an advertiser or writing advertisements or whatever like that, then these would be buzzwords for you. Safe, well, healthy, peace. Because they know you're going to buy it. Because that's what you want. What they don't understand, we can get that free. All we got to do is repent. I can get it right now. I don't have to buy your product to have safety. I don't have to buy your product to be uh, uh, friendly or have uh, wealth or whatever it is. I, I don't have to go with what you're saying. Now, if you have a product that, that means something to me and I'm, I want that, I might get it. But I'm, you're not selling me on this. I had a, a, a first job I had after I got saved. 
I had the manager of the store. He used to tell me all these stories, and he had obviously read some books or something about how to win friends and, you know, take over people or whatever it was. But whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever the case was, he would tell me all these stories about how he had, you know, he went to Alaska one time and he fought a bear and all this stuff like that. And then, you know, sometimes he would tell other things. And I recognized that these are management tricks. No, they were management tricks. You're trying to get me to think something of you and be beholden to you to want to do a good job for you and everything like this. And I would take a big pin and stick it in his balloon every time he told me a story. Pop. Uh, and I said, Tom, let me tell you something. I'm going to do a very good job, dedicated and completely, but not because of what you say, because the Bible says that I'm supposed to do my job as unto the Lord. I'm doing this because I'm a Christian, not because of that bear story. That's, that's what I told him. And, and that's how we live. I'm doing things because my mind is on something about God. I'm exercising my mind on spiritual things and not carnal. What you're telling me, you're trying to sell me on something that you're some superhero and all that kind of stuff. And so I should be out there renting TVs for you like crazy. <laughs> but I'm doing this because of God. See, see here, when, when the Bible say uh, uh, whose mind is stayed on thee, he, th this mind is a form, it's a conception, a purpose. You know, the thing framed, my imagination. The work that is stayed on Jesus is stayed on God. That's how I get my peace. And God said, no, I'm going to give you, you, keep your mind on me. I'll keep you in peace. And just so you get it, it's because you're trusting me. If you trust me, you, you'll be in peace. See, some of us are, are, are like Saul, though. Uh-oh. It was supposed to be here two days ago. I thought you said today. And you start panicking. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to force myself to disobey God. Well, it looked like if it was God, he would have done this. No. He just wants to see if you trust in him. See, if you trust him, well, you know, God, God going to do it. He said he'd do it. I'm going I'm to I'm wait. I trust him. No, I get it. I see what you're saying. And how, how, how God going to be this? You don't even have enough money to buy this. Oh, you know what? God's going to take care of it. If I don't have enough money to get that, I must not need that. In fact, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get in the spirit right now. Yeah, see, I don't need that. He's still here. <laughs> I, I must not need that. I still got Jesus. In fact, what I think is this whole conversation is for you. The reason why I don't have it is so you can question it, and I can tell you how Jesus is trust, trustworthy and faithful and everything, and then you can see because in a little while you're going to see that I'm doing better than you. And then you'll know also, no, there is a God. And I'm willing to suffer these things for you. And I have no guarantee that you're going, it's going to work for you, but at least we're doing everything we can. I don't know if you heard that yet, but, you know, I'm part of the church, and the church is Christ. We're trying to help you out, man. Don't worry about me. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Glory to God. Uh, look at Romans 8 and 9. Come on, we're, we're almost done. Y'all need some shouting time now. Glory to God. Romans 8 and 9 says uh, uh, this. Th 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 see, see, it says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. 
Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. That's not a threat. That's information. He, I'm just sharing. He's just saying to you. He said, but of all this that we've said, and all the problems that there are when your mind is not on Christ or not on, on, on spiritual things but on carnal things, when you, you exercise in your mind, you predispose to this, you set your affection on these things, you're savor singing myths, uh, uh, men instead of God, all that stuff, that you, that, that's not for you to worry about. See, because you're not in the flesh, but you're in the spirit. If so be the spirit of God dwells in you. Hello. See, if the spirit of God is in you, you should not have this to worry about. In other words, you should not be hampered by any of this minding the flesh, savoring man, being carnal minded, exercising the mind on the things of men, entertaining feelings and views about men, flesh, being predisposed, being disposed mentally in the direction of man instead of God. Your interests and concerns being with men and your affection being set on men and not God because the Spirit of God dwells in you. However, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're not part of this. You can have it. He's not hiding it. He wants you to have it. But if you don't, you're not, you're not part of this. Not yet, anyway. You certainly can be. God died so you could be. He was tortured so that you could be. You, you know, you know I, I think about this. I don't know if you ever thought about this. But when Jesus was going to the cross, he could have just got in the Garden of Gethsemane, and, and, and the people came for him, the soldiers and everybody came for him, and and. He, you know, Peter cut the man's ear off. He put the man's ear back on. You understand? Wait a minute now. Peter, don't do that. And, and then, you know, they led him off and stuff like that. And he could have just gone. They could have just taken him to the cross and be, he went to the trial. And they said all this stuff. And he said to uh, 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 Pilate and all that. Well, you know, you said that. I'm not saying that. He didn't argue. He didn't speak in his own behalf. He didn't do anything. There was nobody out there yelling, no, 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 don't kill him. He raised my son. None of that happened. He could have just gone on to the cross. Well, Take me to the cross. Okay, I'll be crucified. You know, somebody take the cross and put it up there and just nail me up there. Because them other two guys, they, you have no record of them carrying their crosses up there. He could have just gone up there and been crucified. But he chose this. In order for me to provide healing for you, they got to beat me with that cat of nine tails. So I, I got to suffer that. If I leave that out, you be running around church to my praise the Lord, but I got a disease. But I took that so you could be healed. See, I, I took that so you, you could be like Minister Robinson. She laying in the hospital, and the people telling her, well, we don't know what's wrong with you. Look like you're dying to me. And I praise God because she called me up and said, yeah, the doctor don't know what's wrong with me, but whatever, they think I might die and all this kind of stuff. Well, <laughs> and we laughed. <laughs> You're not going to die. And I went up to the hospital, you understand, to go visit with her, you know. You know, I'm always cautious about going to the hospital to go visit uh, women especially because years and years ago, uh, uh, a friend of mine, a close friend of mine, his wife was in the room with a, a, a girl who was almost my girlfriend in high school. They were both having babies at the same time in the same room. So I go in the room, and, and, and one, you know, the, the girl is almost my girlfriend. She's going, hold up now, wait a minute. You know, like, we're not dressed right. Oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Sure enough, I go in the hospital. The woman come in there. The nurse come in there. She's going to grab in the sheet to throw it up. She whoa, whoa, hold up. That's not my wife. Can't you see how young she is and how old I am? <laughs> but I went up there to visit her, and we literally laughed and talked about the fact that, no, well, God's going to do something. Yes. Yes. No, no, we don't, we don't care about that. The God, he didn't stand there and get those stripes and be whipped for no reason. He could have. 
Healing did not have to be a part of your salvation. That's right. You understand? The Bible says that he was poor so that you could be rich. So being blessed financially did not have to be a part of your salvation. You could have just been saved and said, oh, I'm going to be better on the other side. You could have lived your life like that and still been happy because God did something for you that you couldn't do for yourself. But he provided that. He went through all those things so that you could have what you have. So that salvation is complete. So I could keep you in perfect peace. See, but 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 you 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 don't you're not worried about all that. You're not worried about all those things because you're not in the flesh. See, the, the problems come in when you're in the flesh. The issues happen because you're in the flesh. That's where death is. But life and peace is in the spirit. So when he says, now, if any man have not the spirit, he is none of his. He's not being ugly. He's just telling you that, no, this is what you want. You want to be in the spirit. You want to have the spirit of God dwelling in you. See, the only thing that, that messes you up with all these issues, with your mind, with your savoring, is if you are in the flesh. So anybody, this is how I thought of it anyway. I got ministered to me, you know, years ago. If you're in the spirit, if you have the spirit of God, then it's a foregone conclusion that you're not having those other issues. See, I had to deal with that one time because, because God had to minister this to me that, you know, and, and this is, you know, a well-kept secret even in churches. When you sin, you step out of the body. And that's why First John 1 and 9 says, if you confess, I'm faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness, and you can get back in the body. Because in the body of Christ, there's no broken bones. He, he, he's perfect. Nothing. In fact, when they put me in the grave, I didn't rot in the grave. I did not see corruption, if you weren't in Bible talk. So when, you, when you're when acting ill and you're not operating in the spirit and submission to righteousness and the holiness of God, you have to step out of the body for a while. And if you don't confess, you stay out. So, so, so what God is telling you, no, this is all about being a part of me, having your mind on me. That being your character. Because you are not in the flesh if the spirit of God dwells in you. So quit putting him out. <laughs> quit putting him out. Praise the Lord. And Romans 8.14 says this. This, this is just a test. This is a self-test. You know, uh, this is how you, you, you know, you test yourself on something. You don't have to tell anybody. It's just your own little personal test for yourself. You know how, how they have those things. At one time, they didn't have this, but women can now test to see if they're pregnant on their own at home. You can buy a pregnancy test, go home. You don't tell nobody. You, would, you know, we have t in the Bible, there's things like that. Uh, uh, there's tells. Here's a tell. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And I remember reading that and, and, and thinking this. So that means if that's true, then the opposite is true, too. And if you're not led by the Spirit of God, you're not a son of God. 
So, so this is just a little self-test. You could decide on your own. You could figure out on yourself. Am I led by the Spirit of God? Am I allowing the Spirit of God to lead me? You know, do I contemplate things or do I just jump and go do whatever I feel, my emotional, you know, uh, act emotionally? Or do I rationalize things based on what I feel? Because the Bible says all that's in the world, you don't want to be in the world, is lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. That's not of the Father. That's not. That's the old trick the devil used on, on Eve. Good to the eyes, good for food, desire to make you wise. So, so, so if, you're, if you're led by the Spirit, then that means you're contemplative. That you have the mind of Christ. You have this moral thoughtfulness, uh, 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 this moral understanding, rather, and this thoughtfulness and stuff, so that when something comes up or you have something that, that, that happens that you have to respond to or reply to or to do in any type of way, uh, 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 then you, you're contemplative. Okay, God, what? That's difficult if you think you're smart. Uh-oh. If you think you're intelligent and bright and all that kind of stuff like that, then you, 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 you're in trouble with God. You know, you need to humble yourself and say, no, God, I, I don't know what to do. I said that in church one time. I have no idea what I'm doing until God tells me. Then I'm an expert. And God said, do this. I, I'm an expert on this. This is what needs to happen. But until God tells me, I have no clue. I used to get mail like that, too. Say, come in, here's what we can tell you. You can build your church like this, build your church like that. But that, the Bible said this. So, so uh, 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 in, in your little self-test or in your test or whatever you do uh, for yourself, like at, there's a time, I'm pretty sure, with most of us, that we come to a reckoning uh, daily or maybe weekly or however you do it, you know, where you determine whether I'm living right, whether I'm doing okay. If I die tomorrow, what would happen? And, you know, stuff like that. Well, in, in part of your reckoning, you should, you should reckon with this. Am I being led by the Spirit of God? Am I a son of God? Because for as many as are led by the Son of God, they are the sons of God. Praise the Lord. And what he, he's telling you something deep. He's telling you something real deep. If you're led by the Spirit of God, then you, you're like Christ. You're Christ. No, you're the son of God. And that's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And those that are minding the flesh are those that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But those that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Father, right now, in your precious name, we ask, O oh God, that you touch us, Lord, that you change our mind. Yes, Lord. Your word says, O oh God, that, 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 uh, we need to have the mind of Christ uh, to let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Your word, God says, we have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So when we start off, our minds are not right. Our minds are not right. But God, we have to submit to you, give ourselves over to you, uh, uh, let our character be developed into you. God, we have to... Uh, Exercise our mind, our thinking, all the things that we're about. They have to be on spiritual things, not on ourselves or carnal things. Lord, we want to be we want to be uh, disposed mentally, God, in the direction of you. Earnestly in your direction, Lord. We, 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 we want to interest ourselves uh, with obedience. We want our affection, oh God. We set our affection on you. The things that we're most fond of, what we love, God. It's about you. When we ask ourselves, what's your mind on? When we're in situations daily, what's your mind on? God, help us to be able to say, Lord, my mind is on you. 
I'm thinking about what you want, what you desire. What should I do, oh God, that represents and glorifies you? Lord, help me so that I can truly say that my affections are on things above and not on things of the earth. Lord, don't don't give me so many blessings. Don't bless me so well that my mind gets to be on the blessing instead of the blesser. We love you, Jesus. God, help us not to make the same mistakes as Peter made where he was being ultra religious. One time he said, you can't wash my feet. And one this time, oh, God, he said, no, I'm not letting you go to die. Even if you're going to be raised again. Lord, we don't want to be an offense to you. We want to be concerned. We want our our, our minds and our hearts on you, Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we pray for those. Our prayer is for those, oh God, in the church and otherwise, who might become enemies of the cross of Christ. Glory to God. Help us, O oh God, that we, get, we don't get so in love with this world. That we forsake the things of God. Lord, we thank you today. And Lord, let us make good or let us make true. Or live up to the truth that is in the scripture that says... We're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If the spirit of God dwells in us. Bless your wonderful name. But it also informs us, Lord, that if you have not the spirit of Christ, you none of his. We invite today anybody who is not born again. You don't have the spirit of God dwelling in you. We want to pray with you ask you to repent and God will fill you with the spirit it's his plan it's his desire if you have anything that you need prayer for we say come we pray with you in Jesus precious name we pray Glory to God. He's your God. He's your God. He's made promises and he's faithful. Jesus. Jesus name. In Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I feel it, Ross. Come on, that's the anointing. That's God. In Jesus name. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God wants to prove to you that he's real. I don't know what it is, but he wants to do something to show you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Come on, submit to him. Let it go. Let go of yourself. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. Andoya la bosha. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church, and praise him. 
Come on, church, and praise him. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. Come on, that's it. Submit to it. All the way, all the way, all the way. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 My God, yes. Come on, let God have it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Come on, he's your God. Yes, come on, let him have it. Let him have it. Let him have it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, fulfill your will, Lord. Do all that you will, God. Break every yoke. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I want my mind on you, Lord. I need my mind on you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Show yourself mighty, Lord. Show yourself mighty, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. Glory. Hey, 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 it's about submission, if you submit to him, Jesus, Jesus, come on, let go of everything, come on. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Just submit to him completely. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Evil Sunday of Abosha. In the name of Jesus. Come on, Lord. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Lord. According to your word. Yes, come on. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give me a hand, little man. Come on, praise him. Come on, raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Come on. You know, God's going to take care of him. Don't worry. Come on, this is you and Jesus right here. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yes, that's it, that's it. That's right, that's right. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. 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 That's it. 
submit to him completely. Yes. Hallelujah. Let him have his way now. Come on. Let him have it. Jesus. That's it. No fear. No fear. Let it happen. Let it happen. Evil Sunday to Bobosha. Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. That peace you feel right now, that's the Holy Ghost. That's Jesus. He's trying to come in. He wants to come in. Yes. Yes. Come on, when he starts to form a language in your mouth, don't take your tongue back. Just speak it. Whatever comes out, speak it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
this church Jesus be the center of this church and every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess you Jesus Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our service times are listed in the bulletin. We welcome all of you that have joined us today. We love you already and we thank God for you. If you're a guest and you filled out the welcome card, please make sure that you hand it in and drop it or drop it in the guest box on your way out. Um, please remember to pray for the lost, the sick, the backslidden, and for our fellowship all of our associated churches. If you have any prayer needs, please text or call Minister Camille Moten. Our number is listed in the bulletin on Mondays at 11 a.m., Miracle Mondays. We will continue to have prayer testimonies, teachings on various topics. Please feel free to attend. And if you're free anytime between noon and 1 p.m. on Wednesdays, please join us here at the church. Even if you can only stay for 10 to 15 minutes, please come and agree in prayer. Are there any other announcements? Praise the Lord. We're dismissing Jesus' name.